Welcome to the Draw Shops Get Genius Podcast, where we talk to today's business influencers to pick their brain and pull out their genius. It's time to get genius. Hello, listeners. I know that I frequently say, oh, I'm so excited. You're going to hear such good stuff today. And it's because I generally am really excited. So I know I repeat that a lot. Um, I just walk away from these interviews and, you know, the whole point of the show is to get that, that genius, that like little, little tiny piece of advice, or maybe spark an idea that's actually going to make a tremendous difference in your life and in your business. And so that's the goal. And today's guest is such a, it's such a wonderful genius tip. Some of you may have considered it before, heard it before, and I'm hoping that you hear it differently today. And it's about publishing your own book. And immediately you might be like, Oh, not going to listen. That's, that's not for me. I'm not going to write a book. I don't even know how to write a book. I don't even know how to go about the whole publishing thing. And I have way too much on my plate, so I can't do it. But we're going to debunk those, those thoughts today. And what I think is going to happen is that you're going to walk away making what, uh, our guest calls a declaration. So you're going to hear so, so many cool things that, um, even during the interview inspired me and I kind of put our guest on the spot to use me as a guinea pig to go through the process of what he does with his clients, which was super cool and fun. Um, so my guest is Trevor Crane and he, he himself is an entrepreneur and he's an author, he's a speaker. And what he's dedicated to is helping to take his client's life and, and their business to the next level. And he's worked with entrepreneurs for over a decade around the world to redesign their businesses so that they can have the time and the money and the freedom that they deserve. And what's come from that in the past three to four years is that he's, he's now helping all of these people write books and publish books and literally take them from the moment of idea into you're now a best-selling author. And I'm talking about doing this less than 90 days, some of them in 30 days. Like seriously writing an entire book, publishing it, becoming a best-selling author in 30 days. And these are people that are just like, um, well, I can talk out my ideas, but I can't really write them. So you might be thinking, well, I don't have the type of business that I can do that. Not true. Like any kind of a roofing business, can benefit like greatly from writing a book. And we'll talk about some of the stories that you're going to be like, wait, what? This, this guy wrote a book about hot dogs and he made how much money? What's going on? That's what we're talking about. So you could be a realtor, you'd be a financial advisor. You could own your own, um, jazz dance center for kids. You could have a kid's gym. You could be a therapist, whatever it is. Um, you, maybe you make candles and there's a book about it. So we're going to talk all about that. And I think you're going to get really excited and hopefully, um, make that declaration. And I want you to listen to the interview so that you can understand what this declaration is and the different steps that he takes you through. Um, the cool thing about it is that you, you can walk away from this podcast realizing that, you could have a book. So you could turn off the podcast, immediately text your friend, maybe your husband, maybe your mother to say, Hey, guess what? I'm working on a book and here's what it's about. And there's going to be, you're going to feel like you already have a book ready to go after you hear this interview. So I'm really hoping that even those, those of you who are like, I'm not going to write a book. This is like way too much. I'm not listening to this podcast. It's going to stress me out you're actually going to feel the total opposite. And, um, I'm pretty much proof of that because as you'll hear in the interview, um, I think this is something that I know this is something that, uh, we will have to do for, for a cause that me and Eric have. So please enjoy this interview. Um, yes, it is a long intro, but I'm just so excited and pumped up for you guys to hear this. And I mean it when I say it in the interview, if you do have a declaration, 
email me, tell me what it is. You can email me always at summer at the You can email our team at the at gmail.com. And please enjoy this interview with Trevor. Trevor, welcome to the show and thank you so much for being here. I'm excited to be here, Summer, and what an amazing introduction of yours truly. I can't believe that. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to talk to you today. I, what I'm really excited about is that I know our listeners are going to have immediate actions that they can take right after listening to the podcast, and I love that stuff because people want to know, what can I do right now to... Mm-hmm take my my life my business to the next level so there's a lot we're going to cover here um i want to talk about publishing epic author publishing i want to talk about super kids books publishing the greatness quest your podcast and the greatness network but before we go into that our listeners know a little bit about who you are what you've accomplished i'd love to know what you were doing before you started this, because you've been doing this for over a decade now, correct? Well, the uh, the publishing side we've been doing for only the last like like three, four years. Okay. Um, before that, I've been a consultant, accidentally became a consultant. That's probably getting close to 15 years now. Okay. And so what that basically means is I had some success in business and then friends and family and Then soon clients started saying, can you help me do something similar? So my mojo has been helping drive profit uh, for companies. And I work with a lot of um, basically coaches, business owners, coaches, speakers, consultants. And I help. and, And let's say, what are their core challenges? The challenges that they typically have when they approach me are building their brand, generating consistent, high quality leads, making sales, um, repositioning their business and their brand for the next phase of what they need to be so that they can be the leader in their industry instead of just struggling and getting by. And I suffered from this myself. I mean, um, many business owners may know this is, you know, it's kind of like a boat. I heard this about a boat a long time ago was um, the the, there's two best days for a boat owner. The day you buy your boat and the day you sell it. As boat owners, I get that. <laughs> and for many business owners, they're like, oh my God, I'm going to start this new business. It's going to be great. It's going to give me all of this and I'm going to have all that. But oftentimes that dream turns into a nightmare and they don't like what they do anymore, even if they're great at it. And whether they're succeeding or failing, it doesn't matter. At some point, they get challenged Why I don't know that I like this anymore. And their biggest, best dream becomes their nightmare. Now, I help those people, whether it's a nightmare or just taking their business to the next level. My background is, what do we have to do to make that happen really fast? And I, I've had some phenomenal success with that. I could tell you a lot of stories about that. But books showed up because through a series of over 20 years of not getting my book done and not understanding how to leverage it in my business and doing it wrong, I found a mentor to help me with it and to learn how to write a book, turn it into my most powerful marketing tool, and I now get to do that for others. And we um, do it really well. I have a whole publishing team that helps make this magic happen, how to write a great book fast in 90 days or less from blank page to bestseller. And then how to turn it into your most powerful marketing tool and 10x your income like overnight. Like I flip it upside down. A lot of people think, oh, you should build this and build that and do this and do that. And then you write a book. I turn it upside down. I believe your message matters. And I think every day that you don't have a book out there in the world is a day that you're robbing the world of your greatness. And it's time to get it out and in and done now. And all the BS of I'm not good enough and I don't know enough and I don't know how and I need to learn this and I need to do that and I need to take another course and who's ever going to want to listen to me and it's been said before and I don't know how to publish and I don't know how to write and I'm not a good writer and I'm busy. All that malarkey goes bye-bye when you realize your message matters and every moment that goes by without sharing that with the world is a moment you're hurting other people. That's my association. So – to, to making sure we get it done now. You can get it done fast. You can get it done effortlessly. You can write a great book. You It can turn into your most powerful marketing tool, whether you're a business owner or you're a human. It can position your branding and your legacy today, now, and it can start with everybody 
that's listening, and it'll start on today's podcast because I'm going to give you some of those steps you can do right now to move you into the right direction so that you make those make that happen. That's awesome, and I can't wait to get to that point. Um, some people will say, is it really important to have a book? And they question, you know, putting in, like you said, putting the effort, or I can't really write anything. I don't even know what my message really is. What What's the answer to that in terms of the importance of the book? And then, of course, finding what your message is. For those people that are having trouble really, you know, making it something that's clear and powerful. So it's a great question because... This is one of the core reasons why I didn't get my book done. I was confused. I didn't understand what to do or what to do next. And and so it's a really important question. And does everybody need to have a book? There were times in my life I thought I didn't. But uh, we're in a world where there's certain types of media communication. I just talked to my father the other day. And uh, he read one of my blogs for the first time in like forever. And he was upset about it. He was upset by it because uh, whatever I said in there, he, I said I grew up poor. <laughs> and he didn't like that I, yeah. I told the world that I'm the son of a horseshoer and, that, uh, and that, that I had some challenges growing up. And he thought it was attacking him and he felt very judged. And I was the dad. Like I've written 10 books. I post on – I've got two podcasts – I have, uh, you know, I, 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 I post all the time. I'm on social media all the time. In the last, I can't remember once you've ever read anything, said anything, not this way, not that way about anything. And he said, Trev, it's not that I don't love you. And I wasn't accusing him of that. But um, I was like, Dad, this this one blog post you saw is the least of what I have said about my upbringing. Like, if you think that's bad, read the other stuff. Like, and I've given him the books. I'm like, here you go. I've endorsed it. Love you, Dad. You know, and he hasn't read them, or he skimmed them, or something. But I know he hasn't read them because he would have been thrown under the bus then and said, I can't believe you wrote that. So what it is is it's a he's not paying attention to those types of media. Uh -huh. You know, there's the written word, there's the video word, there's there's the listen. We're listening. You know, there's a there's a podcast. My dad doesn't even know what a podcast is. There's radio. There's TV. There's only so many ways you can communicate with others. It's visual, auditory, kinesthetic. You know, you hug them or you read it or you see it. And so, everybody is out there making a difference, doing their best that they can, and. If you don't put your message in a book, I mean, you're you're missing the opportunity to help other people that want that form of communication in that way. Of the, even though my dad didn't pay attention to Facebook, there are certainly a lot of people who do, and they they see my messages there. And I just got off another podcast about being a great dad or something like that. There's this dad podcast, phenomenal interview because they ask me questions I don't normally consider. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I think it is the ability to connect. We are not we don't have to go to a f traditional publisher and say, will you um, grant me the privilege of publishing my book? And, you know, you don't need that anymore. You can publish right. it on your own for free. Uh, you don't need you don't have to go to NBC or ABC or Fox to go ahead and make a video and be able to broadcast it to the world. You can do it for free on any one of a million channels, you know, do it Facebook live. You can do it right now. Turn your phone on and just do that. You can go on YouTube and post a video. And my daughter is now 10. She has uh, nine best selling books because we didn't what? ask for permission oh my gosh. from anybody. <laughs> and she has her own YouTube channel on what she wants to do and she calls herself gamer girl and she has eight subscribers on her channel now and thinks she's doing really well <laughs> and she's, gonna, <laughs> she's the gal that she wants to do but she's like uh, the gal that she like one of the gals she likes on youtube it has a million followers and subscribers and my daughter's trying to emulate her and uh you know we're we it is our it is our, I believe that a book is the best way to make a difference in people's lives. That you know, let me ask you a question, Summer. Yeah. Um, if I just told you about an author and you had to go ahead and guess that here's an here's a published author. Let's not even call him a best-selling author, just a published author. And you and I gave you that, and just here they are. I'm about to introduce you to them. Are they successful or unsuccessful? If you had to guess. Successful. Successful. If you had to guess if they were rich or poor, which would you guess? Rich. Do they know what they're talking about or are they full of crap? Oh, they know. So the 
immediately, if you say that you're a published author, it's you now have that credibility. You don't have to prove yourself. A lot of people are walking around at networking meetings or trying to describe what they do. And sometimes they have a hard time articulating it. That's what you said. You said, hey, how do we know? How do we know what our message is? Well, we have a hard time. If you're not a lawyer, doctor, plumber, roofer, if you don't fit into that category, you're like, well, I'm a – and then you speak and you vomit all over someone and you see their eyes roll back in their head and they're like, oh, cool. You know, I think you spoke English. I don't know what the hell you just said. So if you become an author, it's like, whoa, really? What did you write about? Martians, marshmallows, money, success, failure, real estate, lawyering, momming, dadding, nurse, breastfeeding, puppy dogs, you know, you're good at your thing. What is it that you believe in? And where and and the one of the paths that will save everybody here, Summer, is that pick one thing. Pick something you're great at or want to be great at. Pick something you love or want to love. And then you either tell your seer you just you can own it. I'm great at being a dad. And so write a book about being a dad. I love monster trucks. So go learn about monster trucks and just talk about them. That could be your thing. If you were like zombies, write a book about zombies. If you don't know anything about zombies, go interview amazing people about zombies or money making or real estate because you want to get into real estate. So you pretend you're Oprah and you go interview all these amazing people about real estate and you say, I'm writing a book. And today you can say, just make the declaration. That's the first part of your marketing is you make the declaration of I'm writing a book and everybody's listening to my voice right now. I'm a publisher and I believe everybody's message matters. And I believe your message matters if you're hearing my, my voice right now. And I want to publish your book. I know you have greatness in you and I know that you have amazing ideas and I want to help you get that out to the world. So you just had a publisher tell you they believe in you that they want to publish your book and I'm giving you the first challenge is that you go out there and you declare to the world, you just met with the publisher who wants to publish your book and you post that on Facebook, you put that on LinkedIn and you say, I'm publishing my new book about fill in the blank. And what will set you free here is you have many books in you. Maybe you like zombies, marshmallows and money and real estate. Now you just get to pick which one are you writing first? And you could say, I'm not sure if I'm going to write about zombies or real estate. I just am trying to understand. What do you guys think? <gasps> oh, I'm really into zombies. Guess what? You should write about them. Zombies, because everybody wants to know about it. And you're like, no, no, no. Real estate, really? Yeah, well, I've had some success in real estate. Or I'm about to. You could be a complete miserable failure at your thing and go interview amazing people and write a book about it and compile their awesome ideas completely up front. No, you don't have to BS anybody. Own who you are. I don't know anything about real estate, but I'm going to write a book about it. And I'm interested. Who do you know that is excellent in real estate that I could talk to? And then and then figure out your book and your audience. So I believe it's extremely important. And Summer, I've been on a rant here, but I'll give one last thing. The, when I finally got my first book done, um, we made 10 times more money in the first year. So whatever anybody makes, if you're a man, woman, whatever, whatever income you got that you've generated last year, put a zero on the back of it and tell me whether or not that's something you would like. If you would like that, then maybe you'd want to tune in to some Trevor Crane awesomeness to find out how in God's green earth can you make that happen. I love that. You know, you said so many important things. Like you said, there's so many books within you. I... I probably about, well, let's see, my, my son just turned 12 years old. And when he was first born, I had a business with my ex-husband and I decided because I was at the time obsessed with breastfeeding, <laughs> how can I do it better? Why does it hurt? You know, all these different questions I had. And I wrote a book about it, had it illustrated and it was really cool. And it was kind of my experience, but then learning at the same time with with the readers, you know, so I could make jokes about this position and that position and, you know, um, what they do to you at the hospital and all these different things. And suddenly just going through that experience and just living it, I was an expert at breastfeeding. Yeah. And I wrote this book. Then, you know, um, my, uh, we got divorced and I was a ghostwriter at the time. And a publisher that I was working with said, well, you should write your own book. Let's publish you. Okay. So, I didn't know what I was going to write about at the time. And here I was a copywriter, ghostwriter, marketer, but I wrote fiction loosely based on some experiences that I had had. And it was one of those things too. It's just like, well, just write it, just write it. What's, what's, 
in you that you care about, that's on your mind that you're thinking about. And um, I think that people forget how much, or they just don't, they're not really in tune with how much of that genius they have inside of them just based on life experience and how people can connect with them when they when they share some of that. And I think that in whether, like you said, whether you love zombies or whatever it is that you love, somehow people are learning about you and become connected to you. And I'm not sure at all if this is where you're going with in terms of cre- creating that extra zero at the end of your of your revenue. But I'm going to guess that it has something to do with your audience connecting with you on a more deeper level because you have this book. Well, it's a good question. And when, um, in regards to how do you pick the right book to write? Like, what's the right book? What, what's the first book? And really, I think that's the core freedom question here is what's your first book or what, or your next book? If you're already an author, then what's your next book? You've got many, so pick one. And one of the gaps people have is, and I, I meet with authors all the time that write books that don't make them any money or don't position their brand or, you know, your breastfeeding book is a good example. I, I don't, we're not on this show right now, summer, and you're telling, and you are positioned as the breastfeeding expert. Right. Although you are, right? <laughs> you are. But like you're now, you're now an expert storyteller and you help make sure with the draw shop that like people can make sure that their story lands and connects with their ideal target audience. That's a whole thing. Now the breastfeeding and your history and the successes and challenges you've gone through have helped position you for that. But, and it's not like that book isn't relevant. You just brought it up. But like, what's the next book that's going to position your business and your brand or whatever the legacy and mission that you have? It doesn't matter what it is. My mm-hmm. daughter's books are about the three ninja kitties and magical mermaids, you know, so that's her brand. And now she's gamer girl and whatnot. So, um, right. you know, what I think there's four core questions that I ask people when I'm working with them one on one to help them pick the right book, plan it out, and I'll give them to you fast. There's a caveman terms. And the fourth question is about what's next, the money or the business behind it. Because if they like your book, the fourth question is what, what's next? Your book, your book is going to be done. Let's skip to question four. Now that your book is done and people read it and they go, Oh my God, it's amazing. What next? Right. You know, if you don't have something for them next, then, then you know what? They'll go to someone else. They're going to go to someone else for whatever else they need. So if they're going to go buy a breastfeeding bib or cover or blanket or pool or pillow or whatever, then then they're going to go to that person. And if, and they left you. They left the reservation. Are they going to sign up for your podcast? Are they going to buy your draw shop video? Are they What are they going to do next? You need to choose. Now, you can give them nothing. But who likes to eat a bag of chips? You go to a place and you're like you're at a restaurant or – no, you, you go to a um, – a mixer and they're like, or you go to a friend's house and they're like, would you like an appetizer? And they're sure. And you're like, eat a potato chip. And you're like, no, 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 no. Just one for me. Just one, just one chip. No, I'm cool. I'm cool. And everybody, yeah. Are, what? No, nobody eats one chip. Come on. Right. You know that you, nobody wants that. So you give them one thing. They're like, oh, 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 that's delicious. And you're like, well, you only get one. Pick one out. Have one M&M. Who's ever done that? You know? <laughs> So, you know, you might eat one apple and then you eat a second and you're like, that's enough. But your book is bait and you don't want to only give them one thing. So people aren't considering that fourth question is what are you going to do for them next? And I remember I watched a video that Al Gore did called An Inconvenient Truth. Summer, did you ever see that? I did, yes. Okay. So for your audience, I don't know if you guys love uh, Al Gore or not, but when I watched that video, I was moved, man. I'm like, the world is melting, and he hooked me. Hook, line, and thinker, I'm in. World is melting, global warming, got to stop it. What can I do, Al Gore? And he finished the, the, the show, and it was like, there's a big problem. The world is melting. And I'm like, I get it. But then we went into the trailer. It was over. There were credits. And I was like, well, what's going on? What, what do I do? And I looked at the DVD that I had. And I'm like, well, I don't know. Is there, is there something else? Like, what's the advice of what to go do next? And it was like nothing. What am I going to do? Write my congressman? I didn't understand. How can I go do something? I'm all fired up with no place to go. And so I look online. I'm like, 
how do I get on with Al Gore and global warming and 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 inconvenient truth? And I found that I could uh, get fluorescent light bulbs, and I could drive a Prius. And all and all I thought was screw you, Al Gore. <laughs> like you freaking you say there's a big problem, and I'm like yes there is, and he's like there you go, big problem. Screw you, man. Don't leave me in the problem. Who will freaking wants more problems? I watch some sad movie. I don't even watch that. I don't want to know there's more problems in the world I can't do anything about. Give me something to do. What's next, man? Get your next book about another problem. By the way, he has several that just outline problems, as far as I can tell. I haven't read another one because I don't want to be pissed off that there's nothing else to do. Now, God bless him. He probably said something, but I'm just too dumb to have figured out what it was. But, you know, the measure of your communication is about how it lands mm -hmm. on what people actually, you know, if you put a, do a video that you guys do for someone and, and nobody, they're like, oh, my God, it's great. And you're like, well, does anybody like it? Do they watch it? No. Uh, well, then um, I know it is great. But if they're not paying any attention to it, then is it giving you what you want? And so the fourth question is what's next. And the business is the business, the money making of a book. And one of my books I'll give away to your audience here summer is called uh, Big Money with Your Book Without Selling a Single Copy. Oh. because it's everything behind the book. It's get yes. a lead, get the bait. No fisherman or fisherwoman ever came home all proud to fry up a pan of worms saying, we didn't catch anything, but you know, so these worms are going to be delicious. Honey, let's check this out. I got all this bait. Your book is, a, your book is the beginning of something more of how you can make a difference and help people and just give them another zombie book, man. Yes. I love, I, I mean, I, I read a lot of fiction, science fiction, all kinds of stuff. And I can't wait to find somebody new who's written all these books. And then I'm going to pre-order their next book that it comes out so I can find out what happens to Hank, whatever it is. Cause I'm into it. Right. So you got to think that fourth question. I told you to give you all four. I didn't yet, but I want to make sure I <gasps> have a chance to breathe and you can talk. <laughs> No, I think that's so great with, you know, it's not, it's not about how many copies of the book that you're going to sell. And that kind of leads me into the next question, because what is, you know, I would imagine most people are not coming to you wanting to write a book because they want to sell a ton of copies. What is the biggest reason that they're coming to you and why they need a book? Well, you'd be surprised. A lot of them do think that they need to sell a bunch of copies of their book and the money is going to be in the book. And that is far from the from from the fact, reality for most people. Now, I have clients who make – one of my clients made uh, – I think in January of this year, he made almost $20,000 in book royalties from Amazon alone. And he split that with his partner and that, that's pretty good money. Uh, but most people, that's not going to be the case. And they're deluding themselves. They, if you ask them about what's behind the book, they don't know. Now, uh, when I get when they get some education, or sometimes they do come to me. Like I said, I work with business owners, coaches, consultants, speakers, some doctors, and they come to me, uh, lawyers as well. And they'll come to me, and they they know they want to write a book because they want to make a difference, and they want to position their brand, and they want to generate leads, consistent, amazing leads for their business. And they don't know exactly how a book can make them do that. If they're a speaker, they know that it's phenomenal positioning. And as a coach or a consultant, they probably get it. They're like people, you know, a book is like just it, it frames your expertise in the subject. Uh, so they come to me for those reasons. And, and if they don't know and they're just like, I want to write a bunch of books and sell them, then I help educate them that I might not be their guy because mm -hmm. I'm not the guy to go ahead and help them work on that. I'm not the – we have best-selling books. I'm not saying they're best written books. Now, they want them to be best written books too, but my focus is on making sure when you write a great book, you write it fast and you get it out there to the world. So where they're coming to me with and the best people for me to work with are those who want to leverage a book into their mission or money-making thing. And mission and money go hand in hand. I mean, if you don't, and people are like, oh, he's trying to sell something to someone. Mm-hmm, yep, you should, you, you should be. And that's okay. That just means money is an extension of the, uh, is a reflection of how much value you bring other people. So if someone who's made hundreds of dollars, you've added hundreds of dollars of value to other people. We buy sandwiches from those people. We say, mmm, delicious. You know, those sandwiches are delicious. But if you make millions of dollars, it means you've added millions of dollars of value to other people's lives. So I think that's our goal. 
as business owners, for those people who run their own business or want to have an extra income source, then the book ends up becoming, in my opinion, the way, the beginning, not the end. You don't have to go build everything for 20 years like I tried to and then, no, 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 you can state your, you can draw the line in the sand. I want to make sure I outline for everybody that you've already gotten several tips. Today, number one, I said declaration. Make the declaration that you're writing a book and that begins it. You guys are all doing it right now. You know, you can say, I'm writing a book. I just met with the publisher. You can text message the next person that comes to you that's been trying to do a real estate deal with you if you, it's your thing. And you can say, um, I just met with my publisher. We're going to publish my new book. And it's either going to be about money or monsters. I haven't decided. What do you think? And, you know, you can leverage that into, oh, you, oh, you are an author? You know, like, yeah, well, I'm going to be. I'm, I'm publishing it now. He said he wants my book out. And I'm saying I want your book out. So it begins with that. You turn your book into your most powerful marketing tool, and it begins today, Summer. Marketing, though, is communication. If you don't tell anybody, you can't, shh, write your book quietly at midnight when no one's listening. That's not my advice. It starts with saying to people, I'm going to publish a book. And this can be for any type of service-based business. or it, it, You don't have to be a coach or a speaker. It might be, you know... Um, Flipping houses or <laughs> landscaping. It could be. I asked the buddy. It could be for anything. A service-based business. Come on, all things being equal. I was putting a roof on my house recently, and um, the roofers count were coming to give me quotes. All things being equal, I didn't know the difference between them. It all looked like shingles to me, you know, when they showed me the little books and like somebody was a little bit of money, someone was a little bit more money, and someone was a lot more money. I didn't understand the difference. But if one of them would have handed me a book about the 10 steps of chip picking the right roofer or what do you want to make sure you avoid so you don't get screwed by the wrong roofing guy that one would have got my business all things being equal like why not give me this gift that educates me so a service-based professional done expert in your thing well let's say that you have products a buddy of mine or or you have, my buddy of mine ran a bar and he's and he called bs on me he said dude i have a bar in hawaii he's like i don't need a book why would i need a book how could a book and i and i'm not the i don't know I asked him, like, I go, I don't know, you tell me. So if you had a book, how would you use it to grow your business? And he's like, well, I go, what would it be about? And he goes, well, it could be about the best bars in Hawaii. And it could be about, uh, we could go ahead and showcase some of our specials and some of the, the the live music that we have coming in. And I could put it up on Amazon on some of the cool things to do. And we could get featured in media about our new book coming out about Hawaii's best uh, bar and restaurant and he started to make up this whole thing I'm like well I don't know is that the kind of thing you'd like to do and he's like that sounds a hell that sounds awesome he sold himself yeah so you know you get an option and one of the biggest search engines on the planet is Amazon people go there to buy stuff I don't know about you but when I want new toilet paper I don't even go to the grocery store anymore I just go order it from Amazon and it's delivered the same day sometimes if I I'm never. I'm not in that much urgency for toilet paper, by the way. So I can wait a couple of days. But <laughs> but uh, they they go there to search for problems. They're like, ooh, I don't know. I need some of this. I need some of that. If you're not there, you're not there. Like, where's your book? Where's your expertise? People go there and they ask questions. You can do your own research. You can find out. And uh, a buddy of mine has a multi-million dollar business now that he basically built on the back of his book, one of his books, the long subtitle of his book said something about online marketing. And someone did a search and they said, ooh, and they found his book and it was a best-selling book. And it was, they found his book because the key word was in the subtitle of online marketing something or other. They asked him to come speak at this conference. From that conference, he got gig after gig, client after client. He ended up writing is starting a new podcast, a whole new niche, whatever. He's contracted with countries now who want him to be their marketing expert on how they do tourism in Papua New Guinea or whatever the country is. I don't know what it is. Um, but I'm just – you're not there if you don't get your book out. It's one form of media you are not in and people are looking for you. That's how they like to consume information and you're not there. So – I'm thinking right now, my brain is you know, going through all different kinds of services, businesses that I interact with on a daily basis for personal reasons or, you know, for, for your kids services, you know, activities that they're involved in. And of course I'm thinking, you know, I'm, I'm kind of going through the list. If they had a book, if this one did not, I would 
definitely choose the one who had the book. You know, it's amazing how you're, like you said, you just kind of have that instant credibility of, okay, they know what they're talking about and they care a little bit more. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's, it's so valid. So we, we started with, again, we're going to kind of go through that outline again, the declaration. So I'm hoping that listeners, I think a lot of people are probably going, I'm not the type of business that really needs a book. Why would I need this? Which is like, you know, hopefully we're proving right now that it can only, it can only improve things for you. So there's that declaration of, I'm going to write a book. Here's what it's going to be about. What's the next one? So there's a core, there's a core element I always share with people. And it is just the one key to fast success. And, uh, it's that you get help. The real answer is we're talking about it. If this inspires you and you decide you want something and you want something you don't have, get help. If you want to do a video and have it be amazing and have everybody understand your message and have it attract your ideal client, you better talk to the draw shop because they're going to make it compelling and they're going to work it out with you and they're going to make it make it awesome. So if you want something you don't have, then get help. So I'm the helper. This is what I do now. And so you get help and you tune in a little bit, but this is, this is that you get, you decide you want it and then you go do it. You know, you can't just decide I want it. You can't, I kind of want to be skinny and then you don't go to the gym and all you do is eat marshmallows and, and I and eat ice cream and go, I, that's, that's not the same thing. So you decide you want something and then you get the help to go make it happen. And today is about inspiring you enough to go take that action. So you get help. Now today I'll give away my book, how to make big money with your book without selling a single copy. I'll also give you my book, how to write the right book fast and the decision of whether or not your business that is preschool, you mentioned um, kids activities. So let's say you have a kid's gym or something like that. Yeah. A book about amazing kids' gym things, and then your back end is that you you do a night class and you charge 100 bucks for it or something, and, the, and your book is a lead-in. What's next? No, they read the book. They do the thing. They get the next book. They get the next thing. M my daughter's books on the back of every one – we go ahead and give away in the front. We we put give bonuses. There's go, join her her free book club, and there's 50 books that she gives away for free on there. They join for free. They it's a value add. Books are goodwill marketing. It builds good. Yes, and totally. you get to share your expertise and your vulnerabilities. You know, and then you build a rapport with someone. And if they want more, like I did from Al Gore, give it to them. Give them a pack. Right. Let them let them buy something from you. They're 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 hungry. I would have bought something from Al Gore. Bastard, I don't want to buy a Prius, but I'll buy something from somebody. Yep. Because when I need a sandwich and I'm hungry, I want something. So, and if they don't like it or don't want it, guess what? They're not going to buy it. Just right. like you buy stuff all the time. So, the next phase of this, the first thing is just decide to get some help ultimately. But let's go through um, the marketing phases of a book. I guess I'll give you, and I have seven of them in what I call your epic book launch, but it starts with the declaration phase. And then you celebrate the pre-launch of your book. You say, hey, you know, at one stage when your book is done or no, when you just decide you're going to make it available for sale. That's publishing, by the way. If you look up the definition of publishing, it says you, you're, you're announcing to the world that something is available or soon will be available for sale. That starts publishing. It's crazy as far as if you look at definitions of things. And you're modeling – multi-billion dollar marketing strategies when you do that. Now, this freaks people out. They're like, oh, Summer, I could not do that. My book isn't done. How can I have something I don't have? But, you know, uh, they do it all the time in just about everything. Elon Musk did it with the with the Tesla. He said, guys, we're going to build a new car. It's going to be 50 grand. It's going to be the cheapest car I've ever done. Electric. It's going to be awesome. You're going to love it. Uh, we haven't made it yet. I don't even know when it's going to get done. I haven't even built the plant that builds the batteries that will fill these cars, but it's going to be great. If you'd like to buy it today, you can. Uh, first come, first serve, give me a 1000 bucks. 500,000 people bought a car in 30 days. Isn't that amazing? Ugh. Yeah. Do the math on that. I'm not going to do that. I know. I, I yeah, freaking love that. Oh, and then add another zero and then add another zero and then add another zero and go ahead and try to even calculate what that is like. Just do that so you can see it because it's confusing. You're like, what the heck? Of, what the how much money is that? And he hasn't even built the factory that will build the batteries for it. So if you want to model 
you know, well, who are you going to model? You want to model your next door neighbor that says you shouldn't get your book done? Good, 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 great. You write it. Go write it. I've got two clients. I'll tell you the story of two clients right now, Summer. One client came to me and he said, Trev, I need your help with some book marketing. Uh, you're a book marketing expert and you apparently know how to build a business and a brand and stuff with this. And he's like, I've got a book. And he started telling me about it. And um, he said, I went with a traditional publisher and my book has been done for 18 months. It's not out yet. I don't really know when it's going to be out yet. I'm a little frustrated because I only made $1,500 as a book advance, but I was so proud of my book advance. He's, you know, he's like, I got a book advance. And he got paid to, yeah, he got paid 18 months ago, 1500 bucks. And he was so, and he's like, I, I need to go with a trad traditional publisher, but he doesn't have his website in his book. Not on the back of it, not in the front, nowhere, nowhere in the, and he doesn't have his website. Um, there's no path. He has no. I hasn't. He, no, nobody really co consulted him about what this, where this fits in his brand, and what's next. He has no clue. And it's done, by the way. He can't change anything. He can't change a word because the publisher now owns the rights to it. He doesn't like the cover. He hasn't told anybody about his book. And he came to me for book marketing advice, and I'm like, well, yeah, you need some help, you know. And then. So that's what he accomplished in 18 months. Now, I helped him become a number one bestseller, and we helped him get, I think, 10 radio interviews the day that we launched his book. I negotiated with his publishing company to let us do the things we needed to do to make it a compelling offer so we could get him the bestseller status so he can now accomplish that or have that as a, a bragging right in his brand. Now, let's talk to you about Lisa Chastain. She came to me and said, Trevor, I want to do a book. I'm not sure really which one. And I am a blueprint architect on planning this whole thing out, like how to get it done fast, how to leverage a book for your business, whatever that is, what are the next steps. Exactly. Like if you get a blueprint for a house, you know, the architect, make sure your kitchen is the right size and it goes to the right code and that you your plate glass window isn't so big or so small it's going to fall down or break or whatever. They're all those things. And then if the roofer and the electrician and the general contractor and the plumber all look at the blueprint, they get to, the instructions are right there. There's exactly what to do. And there's no I in book. <laughs> like there's no <laughs> I. There's no I in book. There should be a group of people helping you do it just like they would with a house. So I'm this profit architect and I was working with her on how to write her book and what to do next. And I told her to go out and declare to the world like I told everybody today. She posted on Facebook the same thing I'm telling I'm asking you to do if you want to step up and say, I just met with my publisher. He said he want, look, can't wait to have my book done. It's about X. Not She doesn't have a title. She doesn't have a cover. Doesn't even really know what it's going to be about. Just kind of it's about money coaching is what she does. And so she had hundreds of people comment. And she doesn't have this great big list and a brand. And she's not she's not a, a, a television personality. And she doesn't have a million people following her on Facebook. She's just a gal, just a mom. And she posted it. Had a whole bunch of people follow up with her. Oh, my God, that's great. Congratulations, Lisa. She closed $15,000 worth of business in 30 days. Wow. Now you tell me. Would you rather be Lisa and not have a title, a cover, and anything, but like I shared with her the system of how do you follow up with people and sell them your cool stuff, and would and she has a new sisterhood that she's offering people to help them with the thing that she does, and they bought her stuff. Would you rather make fifteen grand in thirty days, or would you rather written your book for eighteen freaking months and da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da, not have anybody know that it exists? And exactly. not be, control your brand. And the book is on sale. His book, he can't control the price either with the traditional publisher he's with. It's on sale for 35 bucks on Amazon. And, uh, he, he, and, and he makes $1 per book if it sells. It's like, I don't know. You get to choose. I mean, it, you, you're, if you're listening, you choose. So, and you essentially take them from the very beginning of, hey, I want to write a book through the whole completion of the book to the printing of the book or the PDF of the book and into the marketing of the book. Is that correct? The soup to nuts. You got you got it. And I have a lot of authors that approach me and they're 80% done with their book. They're 90% done with their book. Their first manuscript is done. And, you know, they wrote it on their own. And oftentimes they didn't consider that the kitchen is too small and the bathroom, the toilet's too close to the sink or whatever these things are. So as we look at it, what often happens is they find out there's a lot of components that are missing. 
They didn't consider certain things as simple as a website or a bonus and where it goes and how do you position it and what the author bio should be and what links should be there and how it's properly formatted so it looks like beautiful artwork and an elegant product instead of some obviously self-published piece of crud. If you do, I mean, you have a beautiful meal. Like I'm actually a decent cook when I choose to cook, but I'm not the most artistic dude. Like I throw slop on a plate. So you better close your eyes and eat it. And it's delicious, right? But you yeah. can't look at it. But you know, that's not, nobody's going to hire me to work in their restaurant because people judge, ooh, they take pictures of food. Oh, let's post that online. Take a picture of it. It's so beautiful, right? So you want to make sure your amazing story is presented in such a way so people can see it. I'll tell everybody right now, Summer, my first book I put out, and I was so proud of it, and my buddies told me, better be formatted right, and I didn't take the time. I didn't do it, uh. and the first uh, book went out there, and I and I had it up, and they said, it's really important to do a review campaign and make sure you get some good reviews on your book, and I didn't do it because I was like, I was busy doing a million other things, and uh, my first review was a one-star review. And it said this book sucks, he, and and it had misspellings, and it was formatted. It was, looked like it was formatted for Amazon and KDP as a um, as a uh, as like a run on sentence. <laughs> 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 and it was just it was it was ugly. They were right. I mean, the damn trolls said something. And oh my gosh, talk about a kick in the stomach. It, it, a little lower for me it was was the kick. But and, a good uh, lesson. But yeah, so we now I have like almost a hundred reviews on that, and most of them are four to five, are like over or five star reviews, and and some of them you're still gonna find a hater. On the same day, I'll find someone who has said this is the best book I've ever read, and it's great, and he's great, and someone else saying he's an idiot, I hate this book, and it's stupid, and he's stupid, and you're stupid if you think he's cool. But you know what? Go read your favorite book, or find your favorite book. Go look up their author. Somebody has told them told people they suck so yes, that's absolutely. just that's okay <laughs> you know part, part of the game so i love what i really love about this declaration is that you know we have a lot of entrepreneurs that 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 listen to this and it's not hard for entrepreneurs to come up with ideas it's not hard for them to get excited and make a declaration but what gets hard is that there's that feeling of such intention when they make that declaration but kind of like there's that quote about commitment once that mood kind of fades then sometimes the commitment fades but true commitment is actually following through with that and it seems to be that people get stuck when they realize oh crap i have to be good at all these different things in order to make this declaration happen and so i love that you know the next part is getting help I, I like, I'm just, I just love that because that actually for me goes, oh, oh, I actually, I can make this happen then. That's it. And it's so funny. It's just a simple thing, but people forget that they can actually outsource for those things that they really think that they have to be so good at. Well, let's look at JK Rowling or Stephen King or James Patterson or somebody like that. These are pretty famous authors. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's, let's everybody just put your put your thinking cap on here and think about them. Their next book that comes out or the one that came out, any one that you read and you liked, uh, do you think they wrote it? They edited it? They formatted it? They booked their launch tour? They built the website? They did the thing? They did the whatever? Did they, they were their own critic. They are the ones that read. How many people do you think touched each of those books? Come on. They built a Disneyland park. I don't think it's Disney, but it's they built a park for J.K. Rowling, you know, in, in Florida. So, you know, there it's. There are so there's probably 50 people that touch each book minimum. Yeah. Because you and you get feedback. Tony Robbins published two books in the last couple of years. Um, one of his books called Money Master the Game, and I felt so honored that he sent me a private email, along with like probably 400,000 other people, saying, "Trevor, I got this new book coming out. Uh, what do you think the title should be? It's about money." And he gave me some suggestions, and then he gave me another. And I took about 20, 30 minutes out of my day to personally write Tony this message of what I thought the greatest book title would be. See, you crowdsource. We are not in a world where you have to play Hemingway and you go out into the woods for six months and take a hiatus and you need to quit everything. Now, people do. Every day I have people coming to me saying they took out the last couple of years to write their book. Good God. 
Yes. No, stop the madness. Do not do that. It's like you're getting frustrated. Like, that's it. Like, I did not say start writing. Now, you, will, I, I, I am throwing a, a brick at all the a holes that are saying that in the world. And you may be writing is great. Go, go write. Go write. Go write to your, but don't, don't delude yourself that you're building your dream home because you're in the back yard nailing two by fours together. That ain't your dream home. That is, you might be a birdhouse. It might be a doghouse. It might be a fort in the backyard that everybody thinks is really cool, but you're not going to live there, and you're not going to invite a whole bunch of people over for Christmas dinner because you're not proud of that sucker. It might be a bird might be might love it, and you might be able to draw that blueprint out on your cocktail napkin. Yeah. But delude yourself that you're a writer and that you're an author and that you're blah, blah, blah. if you just go out and start slapping things together get clarity first make the declaration get past the fear say i'm writing a book and you're right oh crap thing comes up oh no yeah yeah you just hung yourself you hung it i didn't say when i didn't say elon musk said when he didn't say and it's going to be delivered on July 4th. He didn't say that. He goes, well, as soon as they're done, they're done. In the next couple of years, I hope, you know. And 500,000 people said, okay. So it's okay to make the declaration, then get the help. Then you do the next steps of getting clarity and you get some help from someone like me who has a freaking path to get you the end result you ultimately desire. For, so for the next decade of your life, you can stand on top of it and be proud of it and share with people and go, ha, ha. Well, you know, and Money Master of the Game is such a great example of a book. Obviously, it's Tony Robbins and and my business partner. I had the pleasure at the draw shop to work with him on doing a video for for that book. And so we got to, you know, get a sneak peek and read it before it was released. And I just so loved it. And that book is a series of interviews, expert interviews that where Tony is asking all of these different questions to pull out the best practices and how you are going to master the game of, of dealing with your finances and money and retirement and all of that. And it's so awesome. And it's not, what's so great about it is that it's not, you know, Tony telling you all of just his opinion on what to do. He's bringing in all of these experts. And so, like you said, with the real estate example, you don't have to go out there and go, hey, I'm the expert. I'm going to tell you what to do. And this is it. And that's it. It's really going, hey, I'm going to take this journey. I don't know a whole lot about it. I'm really interested in it. And I'm gathering if you read this book, you're interested in it too. Let's interview all of these experts, bring them together. And then people can pull, you know, from it what they, what they wish. And it's so, to me, it's, it's also less overwhelming when putting a book together because you get to seek out those different experts. I mean, if we're just talking about, you know, the kids gym, for example, if you've got this, this gym for kids and you want to bring in more, um, you know, monthly subscriptions or, you know, people that are, that are enrolling on a monthly basis, like why not have a book that has different stories of, you know, well, look at these kids who we're coming to this class and look how it improved their life in this way or that way, or this kid had, you know, diabetes or this kid had this and and look how it's helped them. And, you know, I can't see why parents wouldn't, you know, choose this gym over that gym or this activity over that activity because simply because there's a book and, you know, interviews with different people who have tried this activity and this is what happened for them. There's my rant. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, you're right. And it's, uh, I'll give an example. One of my clients came to me and she's an animal communicator. So she can, if you have a, an animal with a uh, challenge and it's stressed out or won't eat or bites or whatever the deal is, you can call her up and you can, she gives a free little session away. She, you can go to terrypathic.com to find her, by the way. Her name is Terry and she's Terry Pathic. Okay. But uh, <laughs> when she when she first told me about her business, she said, I don't know that I can write a book, Trev. I'm just, I, I'm new at this. I've always had the gift, but I just got certified. How, who am I to write a book? I'm not the expert. These other people are. I just took the courses. And we we did that that frame you just gave about Tony Robbins is that she said went to interview them, and then the the benefit here guys is so big. Check this out. She interviewed the experts in her industry, who now think she said I'm writing a book about animal communication. Can I interview you you for that? They all said yes. By the way, you get you get automatically. You're this yep. author writing this. Something they all said yes. 
They met with her, and then they said, oh, when's the book going to come out? I can't wait to hear it because it's all about them and their insight and expertise. And then they can't wait to promote her book coming out to tell the world about it. Their list, oh, Terry wrote a book about me, us, this book. You're getting promotional partners. And then I do this oftentimes with – so that's – oh, let me finish the story with Terry. Terry finally got her book done. Um, and I say finally because it took a little bit longer because she spent more time on the interviews, but that was fine. She chose to. It was good for her brand. And within 60 days of her launching her book that became a best-selling book, by the way, she added 60 clients. 60. Wow. She went to a little animal show, animal trade show thing, pulled up a booth and sold 30, 40, 50 people, bought sessions from her. They're like, oh, she didn't even have her book there. She had a picture of her book there. And they <laughs> said, Terry Pathak, oh, we would love to work with you. And she sold sessions to them. And she said, Trevor, I have more conviction around my message. I know what I do now so much better. I now have this association. Her confidence is through the roof by like a thousand and she's got all these new clients and all, and she her business and credibility and brand. Come on, credibility wise, come on, guys. Anybody thinking the animal communicator that can look at a picture of your dog and communicate with it because little hocus pocus, hairy hairy fairy. Come on, come on. I am. I tell her I've but that my wife talked to her about our dog and why it shakes and they have a great relationship with it. And it's cool, <laughs> you know. So it's all good and uh, it's just it is a phenomenal path. And you can also, for those of you who are service-based businesses or you create results for other people, your book can be a series of success stories about your clients. You don't have to beat your chest and say, look how cool I am. As you gave the example of Tony Robbins, he didn't say, I'm the smartest guy in the universe when it comes to money. Nope. Every show he's ever on, when he was talking about that, he goes, I interviewed the best in the world. This isn't a book about me. I found out what they did. And then, but then the interviewer goes, oh, Tony, what do you think? Should we invest now? Because now yeah. Tony's the automatic authority because they interviewed all those yahoos about it. You could be too. But my wife's new book is called Make More Money, Help More People. It's her fourth best selling book, Make More Money, Help More People. And she works with women, entrepreneurs to help them. You would not believe some of the value that she creates with these women. They all work together. It's a women little entrepreneurship thing. Uh, all her book is, is a series of success stories from first, from the introduction to the end where they just blow it out of the water. One gal made $6 million in their first year working with my wife. Another gal went from closing her business. She was like, I'm going to close my business, hired my wife instead had her most lucrative month she'd ever had, then made $93,000, like four months into working with my wife. Wow. $93,000 in a month. Her book does nothing but showcase these, st these stories. It's like a sales guide to work with my wife. People read the book, they hire her. They're like, oh, gotta hire you. She the sales process is basically done because they get to hear all these different people have all these experiences. They're like, either everybody here is an asshole, liar, loser, or, or there's something here. Right. And by the way, listeners, we'll definitely we'll make sure to have these uh, the books and everything that you've mentioned in our in our show notes. Um, I'd love to put you on the spot if that's okay. <laughs> oh no, no, no spot! <laughs> Don't spot me. Yes, I'll we'll spot, spot. spot away. All right. Um, so use use me and uh, my partner Eric as as guinea guinea pigs because I'd love I'd love to go through you know kind of the a shorter version of the process of what somebody would go through working with you and your company. Mm -hmm. We, um, a lot of our listeners, I've talked about this before on the podcast and I don't think that you know this, but, um, we have a, we have a passion project where we are, our declaration is developing the technology and, um, community to end addiction relapse. So intervening um, before crisis mode when an addict is going to enter relapse. And we've filmed a documentary and we've got amazing um, influencers that are just experts in technology, super advanced technology that are involved and that we've already interviewed. And, um, you know, I'm thinking to myself as we're going, as we're doing this podcast, wow, what, why not a book for that? You know, that's, that's focused on what our, our mission is and stories and, you know, a bunch of the people that we've already filmed. So, you know, say we we're like, okay, we want to work with you. We're going to be doing some crowdfunding. We're going to be doing some um, raising capital. 
uh, wouldn't a book be a great tool to have? Yes. Not having a book would be a, drum, a huge mistake, in my opinion. Your your credibility, you know, a book is a foundation of your brand. When you have a, well, you have a book, you have a, yeah, we have a best selling book about this. Whoa. And even while you're writing the book, declaration phase, everybody, while you're writing the book, you get to grow your brand. Right. And, and famous people do this. The most famous successful people on the planet do this. They'll say, oh, I'm writing a new book. Mm -hmm. Come on, you're you're using. Let's borrow from the best, okay? Yes. And say we're writing. A, we, in fact, not only have we done a documentary, whatever. The first thing is, is declaration phase, giving it to everybody, and I'm working with a publisher to help us get it out. Now you have a little bit of credibility because you're working with a publisher. Right now, you're working with me, Summer. So you get to leverage that today. Get off the phone, text message someone, whoever it is that you're trying to get to the next level of this. You want to build a relationship with Donald Trump because he can go ahead and back this up. Then, then she use it. We just talked to a publisher about helping us publish this book about. So the first question is, Summer, when someone works with me, I've got the four questions. We'll go back to that. I gave you the fourth question. I didn't give you one, two, three. So the first one is, what's your book about? And I'm a caveman guy, and it's it's the word is what what right what right. what, about? what it's about using technology to end addiction relapse. Okay, so that's as that's your brand so far using technology to end addiction relapse. So that's what your book is about. Now, I'm taking a master class with uh, James Patterson right now, and he said he writes fiction. Obviously, for most people would know that, um, and he said you know you come up with a good idea. And he's like, you write it down, and then you go talk to some people about it, and you say, hey, I'm writing a book about this. And then you look them in the eyeballs to see whether or not they understand or care. And so what do you think? And you don't just ask your mom that'll blow smoke up your skirt. You you ask people, you know, that might want to write your read your book, potentially, and see what they think. And it, see if it sparks them up. <gasps> and if they're all excited about it, then cool, you might have a good idea. Then you get her done. So if nobody understands what the heck you're saying, then it then it doesn't land. So, you know, the, the question is, is you got to figure out the second question here is your who. Who is this book written for? Because I'll give you an example, Summer, and I love your mission, but I'm not an addict. And I've not been an addict except for like cracking my knuckles. I guess I do that, you know, mm -hmm. and, I, and I keep drinking water and breathing air, you know, so I guess I'm a complete addict when it comes <laughs> to that. But I, I don't I, – it doesn't resonate with me because I'm not your audience, and I don't know anybody going through an addiction challenge personally. I don't have it. I don't hang out with people that smoke cigarettes and drink a lot. I don't hang out with people who do drugs. I don't have that issue. Now, I have several friends of mine in the addiction industry, and their audience does, man. Woo. Yeah. But you know who your book is for? Because what happens is people write a book and they're like, well, who's this book for? And they're going, for everybody. And I'm like, really? My daughter's 10 now. When she was four, I used to say this, or five, six, seven, I'd say, is my daughter's 10. Does she want to read your book? Well, she might benefit from it. I'm like, what's your book about? And you say, developing the technology and community to end relapse. I'm like, is that addiction relapse? I'm like, is that really? Well, I guess maybe she wouldn't. And my, my father-in-law is 74. Would he want to read that book? Well, maybe because he might know someone like, okay, so, let, but get clearer. So any family member that has someone that has an addiction problem, aha, uh -huh, see, there you go. Now, now we're getting clearer. Is it for the, but is it for the family member that's going to try to help their friend or loved one get out of addiction? Or is it written for the person going through addiction? Who is clear? Because it could appeal to both. But if you're going to go ahead and choose a language, and, uh, and who you're talking to in your book, who is your ideal target client reader? If your ideal person was to read this book, who would it be? And don't answer just yet because this is an open-ended question for everybody listening right now. And this is one that takes a little bit of time to get clarity around. Now, maybe you already have the answer, but this is where I spend some time with people because the next question is really key. Why do they care? Mm -hmm. Like the reason why I don't care about this book is that I don't have a problem. Or I don't, and I don't need the result. I don't have. I don't understand the pro. I don't have anybody in my life right now that has the problem. Now I might, because you pick clarity, I might send you to my buddy who has a drug and rehab center down in South Florida, and now he's 
expanded and he's got like five centers. So I could introduce you to him. You could interview him for your book. And he does transformational videos as well. And he knows Tony Robbins. He's been friends with him for quite some time. They have a house near each other in South Florida. See, now that you've identified who your book is for, I can give you a referral even if I don't give a flying crap about your book. But let's look at the why. The why question, why would your reader care? So I'd, I can, in your description so far, I already know two things about the why. I know the problem and I know the result. What problems does this book address? Let's just look at it. Developing the technology and community to end addiction relapse. What's the problem? Now, I'm not going to let you answer, Summer, because you know this too close, but I'm asking ask everybody else listening. Think about it. Developing the technology and community to end addiction relapse. What's the problem? Addiction relapse. That's the problem. What's And apparently, there's not a technology or a community to help end addiction relapse. That's the other part of the problem. What's the result that this book promises? Well, it might uh, talk about the technology and community that needs to be in place so that you can get rid of ad addiction forever. Like, ooh, I now know the problem and the result. So if I know anybody going through addiction, I now know who I could point this book to. So this is a really good definition so far. It doesn't mean that's your title or subtitle or anything, but at least at a general sense, I can actually refer you to someone for it because you've done a good job demonstrating what it is and you've identified the why people would care, the problem and result. And you'd be surprised, Summer, how few people understand this about their own message. Oh, wow. This is where I walk people through. And then that fourth question was what's next? Because I'm guessing you guys have a what's next. Because if you don't give them the technology or community, they're screwed. All you did was Al Gore them. You gave them a, you gave them, did I mention Al Gore already? Did I say that story? Yes, yes. I get confused what stories I've told and what stories I have, but you don't, you don't want <laughs> Inconvenient truth, brilliant movie, got you so involved and passionate about it, but then you had nothing to do, no action to take. There you go. Get it. So you tell everybody in your book, hey, there's, get it. You need a technology and a community. We don't have one, but go get them. You need, that's what you need. You know, there's a big opportunity for you guys out there. Go create a technology and a community. <laughs> you know, they're rude yeah. because all they do is hang out with heroin addicts and people who can't freaking open their computer or whatever the deal is because they're not, they don't have that community and they don't have that ability and they don't have that. that so it's it just this, these four questions are the core. What, why or what, who, why, what's next? So this is, you know, you're basically taking um, people through this kind of, and I'm, I'm going to call it this just because this is what we call it in our business when we're just doing a video, you know, it's like, what is it that you're trying to do here? Who are we speaking to? Um, you know, kind of through the whole entire thing, what are we solving here and, and what's next? What can they do? Um, kind of like we call it a creative brief. So that's the initial steps that you're doing with with the client once they come to you now if there's somebody who's like yeah okay so I want to write this book and I don't know how to write worth anything <laughs> I can barely send an email <laughs> now what so um, I'm gonna pick a political subject here because because it's fun and because people get emotional about it but uh, let's say let's go to Donald Trump so some people think he's cool some people don't I think that's pretty obvious <clears throat> uh, now he's written a couple of books I think more than a couple. And uh, there would be some people out there that would say Donald Trump isn't smart enough to write a book and probably didn't write that whole book by himself. Would you agree with me, Summer, that some people might say that? Yes. Okay. But he got the book done. Multiple. He's a president. Not because he's great at everything, you know, not that any of us are. We're not good at all things. So um, the question and I'm actually now I'm getting caught up on my Donald Trumpism and I'm not un remembering the question. Give me the question again so I can make sure. Oh, so the question, so, you know, people say I, I, I can barely write. I'm not a writer. How am I going to yeah. write this book? Okay. So I'm going to give you now I give this book away. I've got two books I'm going to give to everybody today. If you go to Trevor Crane dot biz, Trevor Crane dot biz, and you can find all your stuff, uh, everything about me, uh, trevorcrane.com but my dot biz site I'm giving away my two new books for free and one is best excuse me one is big money with your book without selling a single copy and I showcase study case studies of different people that have made money with their book without selling a single copy one guy wrote a book about hot dogs <laughs> it's, it's called hot dogs saved my life and he made $53,000 in 
45 days or something. And I, and I tell that story in the book and it's his story, his experience, not mine. He's not even my client, but I yeah. show that you're going to love that book. Um, the answer to your question though, about if I can't write, dude, this hot dog guy, not actually the best. His interview with me was hilarious, man. <laughs> He's this hick hillbilly guy smoking a cigarette the whole time. Like just he's he had me rolling. And I give away the interviews uh, in that book as a bonus. Nice. Because it's bait. So you can get more engaged and learn more about me or the people that I interview. And then I might be able to sell you something in the future if you want my stuff. And if you don't, you're going to tune out. And if you do, you're going to want it. And if you don't, that's cool. You can keep getting free stuff. That's cool. Uh, but But in answer to your question about the steps, if you can't write – I cover in my How to Write the Right Book Fast. That's a second book I give to you. And I'll give you those steps now, but I cover a lot in that book. And it's How to Write a Great Book Fast, How to Go from Blank Page to Best Seller in 90 Days or Less. And it starts off with strategy, structure, story. Strategy, structure, story. Those are the first three steps. We use the blueprint as an example. That's your strategy. Are you building a house for a single family? Is it a duplex? Is it an outhouse? A very important house, depending on where you are and when you need it. <laughs> you know, These are all really key buildings. There's a big hotel. There's all kinds of different houses. Get the strategic plan first. Then you build the outline. That's your structure, your table of contents. How many rooms is it going to have? How big are the rooms going to be? Like, what's the journey? And then, the, uh, and if you know those answers to those four questions, this becomes really quite easy. Then the stories come last. Most people think they come first. You now fill in the appropriate stories that take people on the journey they need to go on, just like when you are crafting a message for a video. What are the relevant points that move the story forward that make sense to your reader? Not what you think is cute and cool and that story about you when you're a little kid and your tooth fell out or your mom beat you or whatever the challenge is that may or may not go in your book. But remember, since you have multiple books, it doesn't all have to get jammed into one thing and you're trying to make it into something else. No, because it has a, an outcome because you got clarity first. Strategy, structure, story. And then for those of you who don't like to write or don't want to put the pen to paper or don't think you're a good writer – well, there's no I in book. It's a team. So you know what? If you are building your dream house, you're probably not going to do the roofing and the concrete work and the plumbing and the electrical and the blueprint and all that. Even if you are excellent at one of those things, you should probably get an expert person to come in and do the faux painting or whatever <laughs> so that you, you bring, you build the team. And so your job, just like my daughter's job when she was seven and wrote her first book, she told the story. It was up to her. In this case, she wanted to write a book about the three ninja kitties. And so I gave her my phone, and she – these are the last three steps of how do you write a great book fast. And you're, you're getting some help with this, but these three ways of writing is you speak, scribe, source. Those are the three steps. Speak, scribe, source. I told you about Hot Dog Guy. I talked to him just like you and I are talking. I had that transcribed. With my daughter, I said, Tony, tell me about the three ninja kitties. I handed her my iPhone. She started talking the story out. Then we went on to on the online and we found someone to transcribe it. We went to Fiverr.com. She shopped. She did not want to hire a boy. She wanted to hire a girl. <laughs> she didn't hire a girl who only had five reviews. She wanted to hire reviews that someone had hundreds. So she chose, just like you and I would when she was seven. She looked at the reviews and she could see who she wanted to hire and who she didn't. Oh, I want to hire that girl. It'll be done in three days. And she has – that's not my daughter's voice, by the way, but something like – and then she's like – and, and she'll get it done. And so then – and she hired a designer to draw the pictures for her. And then she fired her because she thought – because she got bait and switch. She said, I'll do it for $10 and per drawing and now I'm going to do it for 40 And my daughter said, I'll do all the drawings myself. So her books have her own artwork in them. And so she did it. But she got – she got it's speak – transcribe and then source the third one on the writing of the book is my daughter was seven yeah. come on she's not beethoven of like she doesn't write as her own sonnet you know she's not some completely the most amazing gifted kid other than her heart and her love and her compassion and all that i think is the best in the world right but come on she's just a kid so she had me help her i was her editor and i helped say this story doesn't make sense here and and then her mom read it 
And then we read it to her grandparents, and they started to contribute to it and said, I don't understand what's going on here. And what if instead of the cats being like this, they should be like that? And and she said no to some of those creative ideas, and she said yes to others. So it was a group project, and then she hired an artist to colorize. And I say she, I found them. I let my daughter pick. She picked the artist she wanted the most. And then she sourced it and someone drew, p- colorized all of her imagery in the book. And now it's the most, looks like the most beautiful artwork that was captured for life will have the story of the three ninja kitties. And so will hundreds and thousands of other people who get the, get the book. We give it away for free, by the way. I'll give you that link as well if you want it. But um, she became a best-selling author when she was eight wow. years old. On her eighth birthday, she became a best-selling author. And now she has nine best-selling books. So if she can do it, and if me, this guy who was poor, raised in Arizona, from my dad was a horseshoer, if this, you know, I've never been the brightest crayon in the box, if I can do it, you can teach a cat to do it. That's amazing. And you've also got a, um, a business called Super Kids Books Publishing, correct? Yes, ma'am. Thank you for seeding that. (laughs) So my daughter and I have a publishing company together because I say everybody has a book, but there's also a business behind every book. And I had to get creative about the Three Ninja Kitty book, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know if you know that, but I didn't know what the heck the business was going to be. But we decided to teach kids to write books. And so we have a workshop and a course where my daughter and I teach it together about how, and our goal, and she'll say, my mission is to help 100 kids become super kids book authors. Wow. And she did a movie about her second book called Kitty Wars, and she dressed up like a ninja kitty and went and fought Dog Vader and Jabba the Mutt and all the Imperial dog poopers and slayed them with her lightsabers, and she met Princess Leopard and Han Sol Cat and, and Chewba Cat and... Uh, what's Luke Sky Kitty he met them in another dimension and then because she doesn't like death and stuff they all came back to life <laughs> at the end of the book that is so awesome and she did a music video and all the kids danced to a music video and we had 30 kids third graders jumping around in, in Star Wars outfits with kitty faces or cat faces and dogs and tails playing this game and you can go check out her movie as well and I'll give you a link for that if anybody wants to see it also. Yes, please. Uh, link, link to Super Kids Books Publishing and to to your daughter's the video you said. Yes. So yes. superkidsbooks.com. We okay. can find my daughter's books. Superkidsbooks.com. If you do a forward slash Kitty Wars, you'll get the free. You'll get to watch the movie for free. Kitty Wars. K I T T Y Wars. Kitty Wars. Not Star Wars. Wouldn't want to do that. George Lucas. <laughs> but Kitty Wars is game on. Um, and then superkidsbooks.com forward slash free book. And you'll get uh, my daughter's first book and you can download that for free. And she'll make you an offer to become an author if you would like. So to. much fun. And for you, Trevor, we can go to trevorcrane.com and to get the free books, trevorcrane.biz. Boom. Okay, and we will have links to all of that in the blog post and show notes. And also, I want our listeners to check out your podcast because it's awesome. If you if you like listening to this podcast where we, you know, pull out the genius from all these different entrepreneurs and, and different industries, you're going to super love Trevor's podcast. Um, and you can find that at greatnessquest.com. Is that correct? Yes, and I have links for it on my trevorcrane.com site. You can go to my podcast link on there and see all the goodness. And we've got a new podcast coming out. But you know what? Um, I don't want to start dripping more of my stuff. Like, here's the thing. I, I really believe that everybody has a book in them. Everyone has greatness in them. And uh, there is a path for you to have profit behind what it is that you care about or want to care about. And You know, your message matters where you are today. I don't care if you're 13, 23, 33, 83. It's time to get your story out and to work with someone who will help you. If you don't like my style, then work with someone else. Find someone who can help you get that done quickly. Don't let it take years. My wife was one of my first students, so to speak. 
and she wouldn't really listen to me and didn't want to do the things I want. It, it took her almost a year to get her book done. The book that her fourth book that just came out, she wrote in 30 days. Amazing. And it's by far a much better book. And so your book can be great. It can be the foundation for this next phase of the next decade of your life. It can be a legacy. If for some reason, God forbid, you get hit by a bus or a, the, the flu bug hits you a little worse than you want, you know, you have something. I have something to leave my children. Um, I have something that there's a banner on a bookshelf. Some people think it, my stuff sucks. They don't like Trevor. I don't know what's wrong with them, <laughs> but, <laughs> too. but I mean, other people are going to get the three Ninja Kitty series and they're going to fall in love with my daughter and sign up for her free book club or take her course. And so your greatness needs to be unleashed in the world. And if you're only doing it in whatever mediums you're currently communicating in, why on God's green earth would you hide your greatness from others? Why would you want to not put your drug relapse book strategies and whatnot? Why would you not get that out to the world? Why would you not approach the millions of people to search for stuff on Amazon that might be going through drug and rehab challenges that could benefit from your stuff and like to read books, whether it's an audiobook, it's an ebook, it's a paperback book? You know, I can help you if you end up choosing to work with me through any of those phases. And our publishing company for adult authors and kids authors, I suppose, is Epic Author Publishing. You are an epic author or are soon to be. And our job is to publish you and your message. You, your message matters. It's not a Trevor game. I'm not so cool. Summer's pretty freaking awesome, but it's not about her either. And it's not about the draw shop. It's about you and what you want and the legacy and the mission that you want to leave behind and live. You don't have to wait till you die to have a legacy. You can live your legacy today and stand on top of your whatever you want to draw the line in the sand and make happen. So don't let another day go by. Make the declaration at least to yourself. Call your mom and say, I'm writing a book. Don't tell anybody yet. You know, post yeah. social media connect with me, reach out. I will talk to you for free. I will work with you on your book. I'll help you get it done. Go get my books. Go get my daughter's book. Get inspired and follow through. I love it. And I'm super inspired. <laughs> so expect a call from us very soon. Um, Trevor, this has been so, so incredible. I'm, I want to hear from the listeners as well, what their declaration is. So, so please, please write to us and let us know because I, I really do believe that with any type of business like we've talked about, I hope that we've debunked any of those myths that, oh, well, only if you're a coach or a speaker or financial guru or whatever it is, you can write, you can write a book and you are an epic author and it will really make a tremendous difference to your business. I've seen it so many times, of course, as being a ghostwriter as well. And um, Trevor, thank you so much. This is incredible. We have so many great links and free books and all kinds of good stuff for you guys. So make sure you check out the blog post and read the show notes so that you can go directly there. Trevor, thank you so, so much. This is seriously awesome. My honor to be here. Thank you for being a great host and for giving me the time to talk about my favorite subject, me <laughs> <laughs> and my daughter. You want to come over and see? I'll show you a slideshow. She's so adorable. She's so cute. I already sent everybody the movie. I'm like, go watch a movie of my daughter. She's so great. She's the one dressed up like a ninja kitty. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Thank you, Trevor. Thank you. Thank you for listening to today's Get Genius. You can learn more about The Draw Shop at www.thedrawshop.com. On Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Your home for kick-butt custom whiteboard marketing videos. Your ideas come to life. Thanks for listening. Please share, comment, and make any suggestions for future genius guests.